another episode of With Sonar. I'm your host, Luke Velasco, of course, joined by, by, by my co-host, Kyle Taylor. And we've got a fantastic episode for you today. We've just got some economic data on the industrial sector today. So we're going to be taking a look at that and how it impacts trucking volumes. And if you haven't already seen by the title of today's episodes, yes, we are going to be talking about truckload volume why it's at its high right now, and potentially why it may continue at least into the near future. Uh, but first, Kyle, thanks for joining me yet again. How you doing today? One heck of an intro there to get you an opportunity to take a breath for a second. But no, yeah. I'm glad to be back. <laughs> Thank you. Glad to be back. We, uh, we're going to have a great show here today. And, and I think that's a very interesting aspect of things because the economic data are always a little bit more lagging, not as fast to the market as, as what we're normally talking about, but the relevancy is almost just validating what we're right. seeing because it may, it may take an extra month and we're already, you know, or maybe even a, a whole quarter. And so what we're looking at is more validating what's going on and, and seeing that post that we, we were talking about earlier, which is talking about these warehouses really in, in, in expansion mode. If you're familiar with these, over 50 is you're in expansion, less than 50 you're in contraction, right? And so, yep. you know, Anthony would be very proud of my representation of that. <laughs> <laughs> Anthony is our lead economist for those that don't know. And, and yes, uh, exactly. So when we, when we look at these indexes, the particular index we're going to look at today is the Institute for Supply Management. Um, index, which just as Kyle said, on a scale from 1 to 100, 50 is the median point, means no growth, no contraction, below 50 contraction, above 50 growth. Um, and, we, and, and the Wall Street Journal actually put out an article on the Institute for Supply Management as it rose to 56 in August, right. up from 54.2 in July, which is big growth. In March, when we hit the low, it fell to 41 for reference. So it is definitely rising and continuing to rise, which means that, and, and by the way, when we look at the manufacturing portion here, it's the goods, right? This isn't the services industry. So Netflix wouldn't be included in here, right? Um, you know, restaurants, none, none of that type of stuff. Those are all services. This is for actual goods, products that you buy, cars right. is, is, a bi is a big one, obviously. Like things you buy on the shelves in the store that are actually manufactured, toys for, for your children, anything like that um, is seeing some growth here. Yeah, so really, I mean, it's finally that retail sector that we've all been talking about, you know, those, everything's flying off the shelves, things are, are now escalating to the manufacturing industry. And also, you know, something that may be a little bit more anecdotal here is how the, the lack of the uh, Black Friday events that we're having this year may cause more of a smoothening instead of just a uh, complete uptick that we see. We may have a, a more prolonged period where now manufa the manufacturing industry doesn't really know how to react to not having this. So I think they're just going to be constantly supplied and needing to be proactive with goods that are going to be potentially bought. Exactly. I think you're 100% right. For, for those curious, uh, we, can, we can go ahead and flip the chart up on the screen for a moment here. This is the ISM so this is the Institute for Supply Management metrics that came out today. So you can see all the way on the right, we're at a 56. We bottomed out here right around 41 and a half uh, there in April. Um, and we've been steadily rising ever since. Um, now here's what's interesting. A lot of folks are asking. So we've seen in our data, truckload volume is very high. It's reporting approximately 50% above where it was this time last year. Now those are tenders. When we take in the rejection rate and things getting retendered, we're probably closer to 25, 30% above where we were this time last year, which is still an incredible rise right. um, abs I mean, of actual freight being moved. Um, and, and, this, and, and we've been looking at the retail sector that's been driving that, but I think this is, this is another, good, um, another good validation for that because like when we, when we look at the pandemic right. Right, and things started to shut down in March, people stopped spending money. And yep. uh, when we saw that with freight, freight shut down, right? I mean, we saw a big dive in rates and volume, everything. And then we started to come back up, and it was, well, what are people spending, spending their money on? You can't go back. Like, if restaurants are open today, there's a lot of restaurants here in Chattanooga that are open today. Right. You can't go back and buy the cheeseburger or the lunch or whatever it is that you buy right. that six months ago. You can't go back and rebuy that. But you can say... I was gonna buy a car six months ago, and they've manufactured it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go, buy, I'm gonna buy that now. Right. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make up for it with those goods that I wasn't spending, and that's what's happening, and that's why this index is continuing to rise. Right. No, exactly. I mean, let's be real. I've been looking for these Adirondack chairs at Walmart, and they have been. <laughs> 
Hard not over. available. <laughs> is this, has this been influenced at all by your wife? A hundred percent. We got this great new deck and it's, it, now I just sit on the ground out there and because I don't yeah. want to pay the hundred dollar Adirondack chair wooden one, I wanted the plastic one that I saw for 20 bucks and it's not there. Not there. It's not there. But uh, maybe that's by design. They want you to spend a little more money. A hundred percent because the wooden ones are there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Maybe I am just a little cheaper than normal <laughs> when I'm buying those chairs. But, uh, but no, that's a, I mean, not only were we seeing issues coming in from, from the imports, so, yep. you know, things produced outside of the United States that the consumers normally buy, but now it's really starting to, to influence what's happening in the United States yep. now that we're seeing that ISM now sparked back up. Yep, absolutely. And, and, and it's obviously showing up in truckload volume. So we've looked at this chart a hundred times. Let's go ahead and flip it up real quick. This is the overall truckload volume level in the United States Through year to roof. date. Woo, up and to Dude, the right, is. folks. Look at that blue line there. I mean, it's just, uh, the stock market. I get market, excited every time I see that. The stock market isn't even that great. And it's good. It's, uh, it's fantastic. Um, so yeah, so we'll look at that. So that blue line there is year-to-day truck with volume. You can see there it's about 50% above where, it, what, where that green and orange line are, which is 2018 and 2019 volume. Right. Now keep in mind, we're not looking at the rejection levels on this map, on this chart, which are about 25%, okay? So when you factor that in, because this blue line, these are actual, these are real tenders that shippers are offering. So when they get rejected, they go through the routing guide and then sometimes they get retendered. Right. The rejection rate on those is about 25%. So when you factor that in, actual freight move is probably somewhere in the 25 to 30% above where it was this time last year. Right. Which makes sense because that index that we just looked at, the ISM right here, look at this. I put this on the one year scale. It's the highest it's ever been in a year. We, we haven't been this high. We haven't even been close to this high in a year. Right, and just for reference, I, I, I don't recall, but how far back does this data go? Uh, let's, probably pretty far. You want to look at the 1950s? Hello. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But this makes sense. We know it's a little bit lower than it was back in like, you know, the 50s and 60s, because there were less services then, right? You know, Netflix Supply chains wasn't a thing. increased. But if we look at the last five years, look at this big spike that we have right now, right? Wow. I mean, that's, that's right in line. That's right in line. I mean, that's great. That's very healthy. And, and keep in mind, a 56 today, right, doesn't mean, like, just because it was uh, at a 60, say, 40 years ago, right. that doesn't mean there were the more goods made then than there are now. What this means is it's growing. Above 50 is growth. Right. So what we're saying is relative to last month, it's continuing to grow. So we're growing at a very fast rate right now, which is, which is right. very so strong. So further just validating what we've been talking about right. as well. I mean, it, it, not only have we been calling these volumes, you've seen us throw these moonshots up. We're talking about up and to the right every week, up and yeah. to the right. And, and so, you know, and there's some, some haters out there that are like, no, nah, that, that can't be right. You can't have all of this volume surge. And so this is just pure validation of yeah. just what's going on in, in, from a different source that's really looking at the manufacturing in, uh, yeah. industry. And you know how much I like kind of being right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's so. actually kind of annoying, but um, fortunately, it's not that often. Uh -huh. Woo, the, okay. the arguments that me and this guy get on offline. <laughs> Anyways, no, it, it, I, think, I think it's true, but let, let's talk about, so, okay, so we know it's high. We, we, we've got the validation. We know, we know truckload volumes is high. We talk, to a, we talk to tons of shippers, carriers, brokers, some in the you know, top 10 largest, some in the mom and pops, everything in between. This is the economic data now, right? Right. That for the balance. So we know volumes are high, and we know all the data supports that. Right. Right? It, it doesn't matter if somebody says it's not there. It, it, it is. The question is, will it continue? Right? Where do, where do we go from here? Right. Right? Do we, do, we, do we remain level? Can we stay supported at these elevated numbers? Do we go back down? Personally, I think we might see another. A, we, I think we will at least hold these levels, potentially even continue to rise for the immediate future. I don't know what happens six months from now or a year from now, but I think for at least the next month or two, I, I could see us holding these levels. Right, I mean, let's just go back to what we were thinking about, uh, or not what, I, what we were thinking about, but what happened back in 2018. You yeah. know, we saw these high rate per miles, and what did our good old trucking industry do? We oversupplied the market. We started Bought buying trucks. trucks left and right. I need more trucks. These volumes are going to be forever, right? Yeah. You know, I'm just going to buy more capacity so I can make more money. And so, the market. I can, this is not going to last. We are already seeing it in the, yeah. the used truck prices. So, orders are up, 
Yep. Used truck prices are up. So what are we calling here? Oh man, it's like history repeating itself. Who would have guessed that? Well, I think I think it's one thing. So you're absolutely right. I think it's one thing to say that we, we will buy more capacity and more capacity will enter the market. I think that's a guaranteed. Right, so as far as where do rates stay elevated at these numbers, it's hard to say. Right. Um, maybe they, maybe they, maybe they do hang out here and they just level off. They stop going up, or maybe they do slide a little bit. We're forecasting on a lot of lanes mm -hmm. that there will be softening in the next six to twelve months. Some lanes we're actually forecasting they're going to go up, but I think most we're forecasting a, a slight dip. Not right. as far back as where we were, you know, at the beginning of the year, but you know, a slight dip from where we are. Right, and even what I was starting to notice, because I tried to break it down a little bit using our lane signal tool today, I was looking at rates that were going into Texas. And so I was trying to use that as the center center point. And so I was looking at, okay, all the quarters. Let's look at LA to to uh, Dallas. Let's look at Memphis to Dallas. Let's look at Chicago to Dallas. Let's look at um, uh, the southeast, so being Atlanta to Dallas. And so what I was actually really noticing is that we we're really predicting that the southeast is going to be growing. Yeah. The, the rate per mile is going up. And yep. then specific to that rate per mile going from uh, LA is also seeing increases as well. So not only are we seeing specific markets that are having decreases, really seeing it from the northeast down, um, but we're seeing these specific lanes in the southeast and from LA that are going up. Absolutely, and, and let's let's flip up this chart real quick. What I've what I've put up here, and this I think this helps support volume levels. This is this is the number of this is the number of shipments coming into the United States, imports, maritime imports, every single day. And about what eighty five percent of volume on the road right now comes from imports, almost think, roughly. Yeah. So depending on the time of the year, somewhere between seventy and eighty five percent. Um, and and I mean th this is the one year chart. We're we're right at the high. Right. We're, we're there. I mean, this is, again, more freight is just coming into the country. So again, does this last? I don't know, but I can at least say for right now, for the immediate future, I think we can expect you know, to, to hold these volume levels. And that goes back, right? So, so that's the high level picture. You right. talk about lane signal. Lane signal is a fantastic device to understand, okay, well, what's happening today right now in this specific lane and how do I use that information? How do I price myself today? Right. How do I find capacity today? Let's talk about that a little bit. You know, what is, what is, how can somebody, knowing this information, how can someone use a tool like Lane Signal right. to better their position? Operational. I hadn't heard the best segue yet. That had to have been one. <laughs> no, it that's was, it, folks. It's that's been a it. pleasure. It I'm, I'm out. So thank you very yeah. much. No, he kidding. did. It, he did what yeah. he needed to do today. It's what it's, it's what been a good ride. I want you to. You can take over as uh, as the host of the show yeah. completely. You'll no. Insert your favorite segue here. No, I think it's so it's so important that you brought this up because today on um, put that coffee down, mm -hmm. they talked about carrier negotiations. Right. And so this is an extremely powerful tool for that. And so anytime you're actually putting yourself in a negotiating seat, something that you're having to negotiate price, maybe you're talking to a shipper, maybe because you're trying to tell them this is why price is going up. Um, I'm, are you tired of just saying price is going up because the trucks I'm calling say no? <laughs> I yeah. would be tired of that too. So something to validate to your shippers, hey, this is capacity getting tight, here's what's going on. And then also to your your carriers, hey, capacity is getting tight. Like, what? I'm putting you into a good market. It help, yeah. helps me identify what good market conditions I have in lane signal. And actually, pull up lane signal because we actually did some updates to it this so, last weekend. And so it actually makes it even more of a tool if you're in a dispatch seat because now you get to see our very impactful head haul map in the top right corner. And so just by toggling this bad boy on, you'd be able to see what market conditions are doing so that you can know, am I going into a good market? Because ultimately, for carriers, for brokers, you need to understand that destination market. And now, even more than what we had before, you can see, quite simply. Where do, you, where do we want to go? Um, go to Phoenix? Yeah, let's go Dallas to Phoenix. Dallas to Phoenix? That's a tough one. Phoenix that is, is a tough one. High rate per mile. It's very Dallas short. Uh, short. Short run. But no, so. That's super short. I mean, you got, you got some miles in there. I mean, what? So actually going from Dallas about to Phoenix, miles. you'll actually get a lower rate per mile just because of that. That's a, a normal backhaul going to LA. Yep. So a lot of that will be influenced so, by the rate. I think you said it without even realizing it, but this is what was so powerful here is, you know, when we look at the market and everybody's like, oh, the market's going up, rates are up, volumes are up. Okay, we get it, everything's up. Okay, that's true, but 
there, there are isolated situations where that may not be the case, and you have to be able to leverage that information a lot more granularly, right. which is basically a fancy way of saying what's happening today on this lane. How is all of this high-level information, how is that impacting, in this case, Dallas to Phoenix today? So what you have right here, I mean, are these gauges, and they show where the pricing power is, but they show how it's changing over time. Correct. So if I'm shipping out of Dallas today, I've got a score of 71. For those that don't know, this is on a scale from 1 to 100. The closer you are to 100, the more pricing power the carrier has. The closer you are to zero, the more right. pricing power the shipper has. And we, we all know brokers play both sides. So we're at a score of 71 today. Seven days ago, the score was about 51 out of Dallas, meaning there was a, it was about even out of Dallas a week ago. A slight edge to the carrier, but now it's really moved, and the, and the edge is really to the carrier. And then Phoenix, right, everyone's like, oh, it's a back home market, it's the worst market. It is a back home market, we know that, but by what extremes? The extremes do change, and that affects things, right? Yep. Today, it actually, sh you're sending a carrier to a decent market in Phoenix. And when I say decent, that's relative for Phoenix. It is better than where Phoenix typically is. So if I'm moving a load on this lane, the way I see it, and if, let's say I'm a shipper, Right. or a broker, because we'll, we'll play the same side for a minute. If I have a load going from Dallas to Phoenix, I'm, I'm really asking the carrier to do me a favor, but it's not quite as extreme of a favor as it was maybe a week ago. Right. It's changed a little bit. Phoenix isn't quite as unattractive as it was. Ultimately, what our customer base has found and what really we position ourselves in the market as is letting you know what has happened since the last time you negotiated. And so that's what this does. Not only with the signals, but if you look just underneath that, we're also showing you how rates are changing week yeah. over week, month over month, year over year. And the most important thing about these rates is that it is a forecasted rate. So we're looking yeah. not only just at what we're seeing today on a fundamental level, so we're not taking into any accessorials or any, any real emotion you know, yep. in, into that. It's really a fundament, fundamental level of what the operational costs to run a truck and then how market conditions are influencing that. And, yep. and so with that, it's a really good indicator. I think you're the one that actually told me using it as an index yep. to show rate change. And so quickly we can see that, okay, price is going up 5%. Boom, I know what my price is, I'm, I'm pricing higher. Yep. So that's exactly how you use it. Exactly, so let's, let's look at today. It says today's median rate, this is gonna be for drive-in by the way. It says today's median rate for drive-in is 293 a mile in this lane. That's without fuel. You add your fuel surcharge in, you're probably closer to two, uh, 320 a mile. Right. To be completely candid, I could care less about that number. I think the number's totally irrelevant. Right. Um, <laughs> and the reason I say that is you might, you might pay exactly that number, you might pay well above that number, you might pay well below that number. I, I don't know, it doesn't matter. What does matter is, and what holds more value, and the reason why I say it doesn't matter, and I, I shouldn't say it doesn't matter at all, it do, there is a lot of value in these numbers, but, it, it's, there's such a there's so many things to consider when it comes to rates. Rates are just as much art as there are signs. If I'm on the phone and I'm talking to a carrier, and let's say I'm a broker or a shipper, right, and I'm, they're trying to move, a, and maybe they're based out of Phoenix and they just want to get home to Phoenix. I'm not really in line with the market anymore. Or maybe I have a carrier that has a lot of lows. Maybe they're dedicated out of Phoenix and they don't care, they just want to get home to Phoenix. Or maybe it's right. the opposite. Maybe it's late in the day, I'm desperate, I just need to move a load out of Phoenix today. And I'm just like, you know what, I don't have time to work on it. First person, let me just call. Sure, you can have whatever you want. And they asked for a giant premium, and I gave it to them because I was desperate for whatever reason, right? When that stuff happens, right, that, that kind of throws off numbers. But what is true and what's really valuable, and you'll see here, is the rate, the week over week changes up 1%, the month over month changes up over 31%. Right. That is something that I can even use. Year over year, don't even want to. Year over year, forget Why can't it. my portfolio look like that? You know, All right, seriously. <laughs> but when we you look at those numbers, the way I see it, okay, rates are continuing to edge up, have edged up on this lane right. over the last week. If I moved the load on this lane a week ago, I may expect to pay a slight premium to where I did a week ago. That's how I use this information. Right. And the opposite is true. We're forecasting a slight decrease on this lane in the coming weeks. I need to know that. That I can leverage that to save money or from a carrier potentially avoid this lane. Yeah, no, spot on. And we're in a really unique week as well because we're coming up against a, a three day weekend. So now that's right. And so I totally forgot. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, I don't come into work on Monday? What? Crap. <laughs> well, I don't come into work anyway except to film this show with you. So, yeah. um, um, you got any plans? Uh, actually, got my, my sister, so my nephew's gonna be in. Okay. This guy's like, 18 months old, so a year and a half old. 
guy's running, so I'm going to be trying to do some some work here when he gets in, and then yeah. go hang out with him for the for the weekend. I get to figure out what you are living like <laughs> for a couple <of> days. <laughs> yeah, that yeah. whole thing. <laughs> yeah, forget about that. Wait, I have kids. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> kidding. I do have kids. They're they're great um, most of the time. Anyways. <laughs> It's true. It's true. Anybody that has kids knows kids it's a are blessing. great. Blessing. You can't live with kids them. Kids are great. Without them. Most of the time, but like anything, words can be hard to express yourselves when you're young, and that can make life difficult sometimes. So my sister actually, completely off, is teaching my nephew, so her kid, sign language. Sign language. So he knows okay. like like more, yeah. thank you, like no. Sure. And so I was like, how's that going? He's like, he's actually picking it up, and I was like, wow. That's wild, because just like you said, you know, words yeah. are, they can't really articulate words, but he can say, like, yeah, I want more. Well, kids are, kids are really good at adapting to things really quickly, and boom, segue, just like oh. sonar. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Sorry, that was serious. That was a stretch. I even I admit that was a stretch. Okay. But no, really, sonar does react so quickly to the market. Um, <laughs> I was looking for one. The I was fishing king for one. of the <laughs> segue. Yeah. Not, Not the segue only. that you ride, by the way, which I did see, see one the other day. There you go. Interestingly enough. I didn't know those things were still around. No. Yeah. Must have been like a signal. Yeah. Something to show you what's going on in sonar. Oh, With goodness. sonar, signals is what we're oh. talking about. Lane Just signal. in case you were wondering, with sonar. I thought my transition was bad, but wow, that, that you, you dug Real. to the earth's we're, core we're, to get that one. <laughs> we're digging out of this hole here. <laughs> No, but kind of back to it. I mean, we're we're going to start to see a little bit of tightening just coming out of a typical, you know, long weekend. More carriers are going to come off the the road to really just be back in their markets. You're going to see less long haul acceptances. Yep. So, um, not only do we have this coming off, so we're definitely going to be seeing a, a slight tightening as well in some markets. I just flipped up. I'm gonna I'm gonna flip things around a little bit. So we were going from east to west, and now I switched it around. So we're going from LA to Dallas. Here's what's interesting about this lane. So the Shipping out of LA has just been, it's been through the roof, right? Care has been making tons of money, right? It doesn't right. make any, any sense how much they're getting, but it's, it's just ridiculous, right? Which is, which is great. Good time to be a carrier. What's interesting though is Dallas is really starting to pop off right now. Well, I mean, let's be real. Dallas has been popping off since like COVID has hit. This is fair. Let me rephrase that. It, it's kind of like, it's kind of like, Dallas is kind of like Tesla in the sense to where it rose all the way up to $1,000 and had like a 3X gain since like March. And everyone was like, wow, that's amazing. Oh my goodness, it's done. And then it went all the way up to 2,000. It's like, wow, it's done. And then it went up to 2,500 and it's like, okay, seriously. And then they did a stock split and it went up another 10%. That's kind of like what Dallas bought is. back in right after the split. Yeah, so. buy high, sell low. Yeah. Um, so. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect strategy is what is is what happens there, but uh, but not only can you kind of relate that also to this as well because I mean we're seeing everything I mean, going from the west to the southeast or even stopping in, in Texas we're seeing rate per miles through the roof. We are seeing and, them through and, the roof, and so I mean this is further validating that and and giving you those indicators or those signals to tell you kind of all right yeah. I'm negotiating in what kind of market condition. All right, good. I need something more near term, and that's what this gives you. One dashboard. What's really interesting too is the week over week change in rates from LA to Dallas uh, are down about two and a half percent. All right, a little less than two and a half percent, about two and a quarter percent. Yeah. And that's not that's not substantial, but that's something that's interesting. It's kind of like an indicator. It's like okay, well maybe I should actually be paying a little bit less on this lane. A lot of people don't realize that they're just like, oh, the market's up and LA is popping off, therefore I need to pay more. That's not right. always true. Well, and we're just coming and off a hurricane as well. We are just coming off the hurricane. Which is, and what's really interesting is we're forecasting for the next week rates to actually go up on this lane again. So we had a little dip there, and then we're going to go back up. Um, and, and potentially that could be due, due to the um, uh, due to the imports that are coming in. We're right. seeing more increased imports coming in yes. uh, to LA and Long Beach, and that's going to help drive some of that um, right. and just tightening in general. Uh, but yeah, it, it's interesting to see where, where it's all going. And so. honestly, I mean, we talk about how great this is, and you know, we could do that till we're blue in the face. But really, for for all of you guys out there, like, what are the implications of you not knowing that volumes and rejections are going up? You know, you're losing out on margins, or you're not negotiating right on the front end, yep. which is costing you time and money. Because we all know if you negotiate bad, what happens? I end up on the phone with a hundred carriers trying to find someone to cover my freight and then I end up losing my margins on it. So not only am I wasting my time, 
but I'm also losing margin percentage on that. Well, it's, it's the same thing with, with, with a shipper, a broker, a carrier, right? It's all the same. Everybody, every, shipper, shipper has one interest, okay? How can I save money on my transportation budget? Brokers, how can I make more money on these loads than I did yesterday? Because that's our goal. Our goal is to just improve as human beings, improve our business. I'm a carrier. How can I get paid more today? And while those things are, those things are great, and, and I'm not saying that you know, those are bad goals to have, they, they're not, that's not strategic. Right. What, what this allows you to do is be strategic. Okay, well, you want to lower, if you're a shipper, you want to lower your transportation budget. How are you going to do that? Well, I'm just going to pay everybody less. Well, that's not helpful. Right. How are you going to do that? Maybe it's these lanes are actually I have 5,000 lanes. Yeah. I have a goal for, the, for an annual cost savings how can we, of 3%. How can we lower our cost by 3%? Where are you going to do it? Okay. Well, let's look at this. Right the, now, right. all of a sudden, we're saying, okay, well, these lanes are actually softening a little bit while these lanes are tightening up. Right. Don't try to fight carriers on these lanes. I mean, you're at a disadvantage. You don't have the operational bandwidth to do that. Forget it, pay them, move on. These lanes over here, you have the opportunity to soft. Negotiate here, right? Right. And it's the same thing for brokers, right? Negotiate carriers down here. Just pay them and move on here. Don't waste all your time doing that. You can make more money on these loads. Carriers, same thing. At the end of the day, we all got something that's, uh, that's the same. We all. We only have a, you know, a finite amount of time, and so how can I maximize what I'm doing yeah. with that amount of time? And that's exactly what this gives you that ability to do. So you know, there's, it takes the guessing work out of it. I mean, you talk about art and science is a lot of things with pricing and negotiating. So there, you know, how do we take out that science piece and really be able to focus on the art? And so that's yeah. exactly what this is, is you know, giving you that ability to do. And we only looked at one page. And that's what, that's what people are good at, right? I, I, I really, really hate when we try to give ourselves tasks that we're, we're not designed to do. People are not great at, at, at science. We're, and I, let, me, let me oversimplify here all by right, saying, all right, all right. That, that's an oversimplification. I'll hear you out. People, people aren't really good at, um, at keeping emotion out of things like price when it comes right. to it. Okay, so in that type of science, that's what I'm talking about. People are really good at, at building relationships. So. Focus on your relationships piece and let the data take care of itself. Let the data tell you how to build those relationships, how to more strategically build those relationships. Right. Use your strengths. So how do I get better? You got you to be able to, to monitor something. You got to be able to gauge something. And unfortunately, you having that magic finger that just sticks it in the air. And I know rate per mile because I've been in this industry 15 years. And yeah. LA to Dallas, I got it, I got <laughs> it down. By the way, I know, we, I know we've seen some comments on LinkedIn. Anybody giving us a shout out? A lot of shout outs. Uh, no questions, but obviously they're loving the content here, so we must be doing something right. I'll have yeah. to, we'll have to tell George. Well, we are. Maybe Sonar is. Maybe they just like the charts. <laughs> Maybe they're kind of like, guys, you can just like, stop talking and just keep flipping through. I want to see more stuff. If it wasn't for the two up two polos, they probably would have gotten rid of us. I know. I'm still a little upset that my logo is smaller than yours. Yeah. Well. This was the prototype, and that's the the slightly better prototype? What happens, guys, is I don't know what my size of shirt is, and Luke's a little bit bigger than I am. So it yeah. works out. What, is that? what do you mean bigger? Like Large, bigger good, medium. Okay. <laughs> Something like that. That's Something all like we that. got, though, That's right? all we got for today. We're getting here on the end of time. It's been an absolute pleasure. Um, I'm just excited for, uh, uh, for, I think, how some of this data is going to react to Memorial, or excuse me, not Memorial Day. Labor Day. Yeah, um, we're gonna have Labor I think Day. I think we might see a little bit of a dip there as things shut down for the weekend. But it'll be interesting to see what comes if it how quickly it bounces back or levels off. So we'll keep a look at that. That'll be something that we'll discuss next week because we will have an episode next Wednesday at 4 p.m. So make sure you do tune in for that. Um, and we also have the Global Trade Summit coming up as well. I believe in two Wednesdays, or if I'm not mistaken, I believe it's on the 16th. Um, yeah, yours truly will be talking about global trade and what to expect yeah. on the global scale. Don't so. worry, we will have Henry Byers, our maritime expert, on the call with us. He actually he used to work for, for an MVOCC for a while uh, before coming to FreightWeb, so he's got a lot of really good experience in that world. But anyways, that's all we've got for today for with Sonar. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you have any questions or want to see Sonar, leave a comment below. Kyle and myself will reach out to you. And in the meantime, have a fantastic rest of your day.